Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. You should go to my live. There will be frolic, don't you know? There will be frolic. You just got to sub up. But I'm going to be doing Pierre Lebrun has brought from The Athletic. I got a subscription to The Athletic. I'd recommend it. Good stuff on there. He's got some. He's got a couple of rumors about Goudreau, uh, Strom from Chicago, and uh, we have some awards to uh, predict from a panel of the people there on Athletic, and we're going to talk about it. I'm going to give you my reaction to it. Yeah, but go sub up um, one till or one till three Mountain or three to five Eastern weekdays. You will find me. And the Frolic and all the people that go there. And you can be part of the fine uh, programming over there. It, it's good times. Also, last night, I was on with Peyton on the radio. You want to sub up to Peyton on the radio. We did uh, Vegas and Seattle together. And it was all a flutter on the uh, social media. They were like, oh, my gosh, you got to check out. So yeah, you, you want to check that out as well. Okay. Well, Pierre Lebron did some exciting stuff. Uh, thanks. Oh, thanks for subbing, by the way. Uh, Hernandez and Melissa have been just running like straight, sending out your pearls of wisdom necklaces for all the subs that we have uh, in the Pearlocopter, as you know. And not to mention, every sub brings us that much closer to the Jetto Frolic that I'm going to come to all of your lands with. And uh, we're going to do, you know, the Pearl dance together and all that. So who wouldn't want to be part of that? I don't know. Uh, let's take a look at All right, I gotta get it set up here. Take a look at the athletic Pierre LeBron. What is he got to be saying today? Uh, look at that LeBron, why the season should start earlier. And uh, I'm with you, buddy. I was already talking about it on my live. Uh, do we need two weeks of preseason? Like, I don't know. If, if any of you are new to the NHL or what have you, and you buy into this stuff where they tell you that the players are fighting for their spots in preseason, it's, they're not. Preseason, as far as camp and all of those things like that the guys that come in condition uncondi like you can lose your spot i suppose in preseason if you just absolutely completely drop the ball and come in out of shape and all of those sort of things like that in the preseason games but you're not you're not going to gain a spot in preseason games preseason games are not competitive there's not no hitting anything it, you cannot get a gauge on anything in preseason. How many times Brandon Perlini from the Edmonton Oilers, if, if the season was only preseason, if you go back to all his preseasons, he'd be in the freaking Hall of Fame. But when it comes down to actual playing hockey, he barely makes the lineup. So it, it doesn't really tell you all that much. And uh, apparently, uh, something interesting here, there's a couple owners that would like to start the uh, season later just because they don't want to compete with the NFL. Uh, no. Hockey in Ju June is ridiculous. We need it earlier, 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 and certainly less freaking preseason. Can't stand. Uh if, but I've reiterated, I've written many times over the years, if I were in charge of the NHL, schedule preseason would be shortened and the regular season would start around September 20th. High five, my friend LeBron. I know you're watching. I know you are. Why wouldn't you be, right? It makes you feel good in your insides to know that Perlo agrees with you, doesn't it? Bet you it does. Okay, next. Chicago Blackhawks are listening on Dylan Strom, well, Dylan Strom has been a problem ever since he got drafted. He's had a skating issue. When Arizona picked him third overall back in, what was that, 2015? Uh, 
Yeah, third overall. I was like, what are you doing? Why would you? It was the deepest draft that we had seen in a long time. And they draft a guy who has skating issues. I know we put all good offense up, but there was like, go look at that draft. Look at the draft and, and the players that they could have had if uh, if they want to do in that spot. Uh, I know you're going to say, well, the experts had him projected. Okay, whatever. Call me not an expert if you want. I did not have Dylan Strom in the top three. No way would I have touched him. I was Mitch Marner all day. Marner all day. And uh, I don't understand it. But anyways, problem is, Dylan Strom never did get his skating up. And there has been talk that part of that is simply because he hasn't tried that hard to. <laughs> he just hasn't worked on it that much. Um, and now he's down in the lineup and they, uh, they're they looking to trade him. But for the heck of it, because he does have offense. I mean, he's got good hands as far as passing and stuff is concerned. Uh, he's got a decent shot. He, he does put up some points. So I thought I would do it upon ourselves and look at a place that uh, we could get Dylan Strom. Another thing that we can look at, too, I'm going to say, first of all, the Buffalo Sabres, but I'll show you how many points that Dylan Strom has got, too. Why not? Uh, they got Tage Thompson playing up the middle. They, they may want to really give him a shot there at the middle. That's up the middle. That's what he was drafted to be, was a center. Uh but so far in his career, he's looked better as a winger. So I think you could get him on the cheap. He's at $3 million, Dylan Strom, that is. And he's a restricted free agent. So you're there, whoever grabs him is going to have to give him a qualifying offer of like 3.1, 3.2 next year. So you're going to want him to be a, a guy that can, can possibly play in your top six. He can't play in the bottom six really at all. But I think Buffalo might have an interest for like virtually nothing. They're not going to really get much back for him at all, I don't think. Um, so why not fill a roster spot, give him a shot? It's a no low risk. If it doesn't work out, send him on his way to other lands, see if anybody's going to pick him up, make him a free agent, don't give him a qualifying offer, and he can find his way out so there. But I think it would be a good opportunity there for Buffalo to work with this skating, see if they can find a, a, a combination that works for him. Because I think that's possible too. Like say you got little Vinny Hinnestroza there uh, and uh, Skinner could can really use a passer and both of them can skate fast. So they might be able to make up for Strom's skating problems and work on their timing together and things work out. You never know. I think it would be worth the shot. But really quickly, I'm going to look at the Chicago Blackhawks. I'll go to the Chicago Blackhawks and Dylan Strom. Dylan Strom. See, he's making three million. We'll look at his uh, points here. Seventeen points in forty games last year wasn't great, but the year before, thirty-eight and fifty-eight, and he did have a fifty-one point season in fifty-eight games. He's porous defensively, though. That's that's the other problem. Um, and if his points are down here, he really is doing nothing for your lineup. So it's a risk, but I think it's one that Buffalo can afford to take. The other one that I had was the Boston Bruins. If the Charlie Coyle experiment doesn't work out, and I think there's a really good chance that he doesn't, he could be, uh, I know that there's probably cap issues they would have to be able to, they're about a million seven, I think, under the cap right now. Um, there would have to probably be another player going back, maybe Carson Kuhlman, who can be pretty easily replaced um, to make up a little bit of the cap room. There's several ways that uh, they can find a way to get the cap room, I'm pretty sure. Um, maybe even Chicago gets so much that there's – because I looked at all the whole league and there's not too many places I saw for Strom. Maybe Chicago has to retain a little bit for the year. To, to, to allow this to happen. But if Charlie Coyle doesn't happen, Taylor Hall, uh, I mean, Strom does have a good shot. Taylor Hall's a great passer. He might be able to work in here with Hall and Smith. And if it does work, if it really knocks it out of the park, because they're both great skaters too, if he can keep up with them enough that they can make a pretty decent line, you never know. Maybe you 
give him a qualifying offer and give him another shot next year. I think that those are two teams that would be pretty good for Dylan Strom. Tell me what you think. I'll be sending this out to all the lands. What do you think about that, giving them a shot? Or Chicago, what do you think about the return? Think you're going to get anything for them? I, I hate to tell you, but I really don't think it's going to be much at all. Um, next, Giroux and Flyers, and uh, Giroux and the Flyers mutually agree to wait on talks, and we'll see. We'll talk about before this about Ekholm. Uh, Giroux and the Flyers mutually wait on talks, meaning they're not going to talk about it until the season is up. I think that they're going to sign Giroux all day. Giroux is like a cult hero in Philadelphia. Um, he'll probably take a pretty big cut from the $8 million he was making, uh, even though he honestly has put up enough points where he's it's not really that much of an overpayment. He is 34 years old. I think he'll, he'll make the cap work. Giroux and the Flyers love each other. They just love each other. Now, one thing that uh, LeBron did kind of throw in there at the end was that he's from Hearst, Ontario, intimating that maybe he goes to Toronto in the offseason, gets to go home. Now, I've heard a whole bunch of people saying that Montreal has been interested in a long time. I just don't think it's going to get that far. Tell me what you guys think, Philadelphia Flyers fans. The only way I would say that this would get far is if, Again, the Flyers just crap the bed this year. If it's a complete mess, like it was last year, and nothing gets better, they made to say, you know what? We screwed up. We should have did a real rebuild and do that. That would be a possibility. Next, we have uh, Predators uh, at home hammering away at contracts. And there's a little update here where they signed a four-year deal at 6.25. Five million, um, and uh, it's okay. I just don't understand what the Nashville Predators are doing. That team should be rebuilding. Um, the good news, the good thing is, it was only a four-year deal. Um, it doesn't say anything about no trade clause here. But if there's no no trade clause, it's okay. Give it a shot this year. See how good you can do. A, truly establish your direction, which I think it's going to be fairly clear to me that that direction should be rebuild. But who knows? Uh, Forsberg is going to be up on free agency this year. So if they're missing the playoffs completely, does this deal make all that much sense? Wouldn't this be the guy you want to trade? Possibly, though, be, possibly, though what they're thinking is, they sign Ekholm to four years. Uh, they realize that they're just not good enough come trade deadline. They trade Forsberg and they go to Peter. It was like, hey, you know, we, uh, I know we, we've signed you for four years, but I think we're going to have to get younger here. I'm sorry. Which would really tick me off if I was Ekholm because he's given that Nashville quite a bit. He probably could have got a lot more on the open market if he decided to do so. Um, it's possible that they just keep him though. He's been such a good shoulder soldier that he, they want to use him for, uh, the rebuild after uh, helping the young guys in the rebuild, I guess. But I find it kind of odd. It feels like sort of what Anaheim did, keeping Lindholm and Manson and all that. And it just seems to make the rebuild last so long. The people that do it well are like Arizona that it just did. And they've got like three first five seconds next year. Um, uh, Detroit just sold everything off as much as they could and then rebuild and slowly. I don't know why they don't do that more, but I didn't, I don't mind that the money that he got for 6 million. He's been a good soldier for a top four guy, but I do think that um, for, for the Nashville predators, it just doesn't make all that much sense. How old is he by the way? 31. He's up until he's 35. Uh, doesn't see there's no trade clause. That's no. Oh, no. That's the up till now. They don't have it updated yet. Oh, yeah, they do. No trade clause. Okay, there's no no trade clause. So I guess you can kind of trade that away if you want to. I just think it's kind of a crappy thing to do to a guy if you do that. 
if you were to sign him, you're, you know, I would think you're giving him an impression that he's sticking around and then you just let him go. I don't know. Maybe the talks were like, we're going to try really hard, but I'll just let you know we may have to trade you. Maybe they're being honest with them. Uh, Flames, Goudreau camp, keep dialogue open. And this has been an interesting thing with the Calgary Flames. I had, I have did speculation videos where he gets traded um, to several teams. Um, but I thought maybe it would be a good idea. Uh, but they want to go out and get Coleman. They're talking about being in on Eichel. That doesn't sound like a team that's ready to give up the ghost here. They they sound like a team that's just going to keep on pounding out trying to be a, a contender. Now, if they go get Eichel, you certainly are not going to trade Goudreau. I don't think Goudreau would be part of that deal. The whole point of going out and getting a guy like Eichel is that you want to be able to win now and in the future as well. And you will if you get a healthy Eichel, no doubt about it. So maybe that's why Cap, the, the, the dialogue is open too because there's a lot of things that could happen here to uh, to go with Goudreau's future over the season. If this team like totally craps the bed, this could be a big, big problem. Big problem. Uh, Goudreau would probably be heading out, in which case then another team would be taking care of this contract. Interesting. I, it does say in uh, in the uh, it does say in the article here that Goudreau and I've heard this over and over again that Goudreau seriously wants to stay in Calgary. He loves it there. He doesn't want to go anywhere. He's not thinking about going anywhere. All the rumors that he wanted to go back to New Jersey or Philadelphia around where he lives are apparently like over and over. He said they're not true. I just don't know why you would say that if he, if they're really not. So I doubt that they are. Uh, uh, with Barkoff and Zabonijad signing, it kind of gives them something to work with there. I think eight makes sense, but the problem is the last couple of years he hasn't put up much points. The Goudreau is a really nice guy because if he was playing somewhere else and he wasn't passing to Monaghan, who's been hurt and not doing well, and he had better t teammates with him, I think he could be a lot better. And if I'm Goudreau with Calgary, I'm like, look, we got to take into consideration our team hasn't been very good here. I'm not taking like six million based on my points for the last two years. And, uh, you know, so I can go somewhere else or go in the open market and get way more than that. We'll see. Maybe it takes a serious discount to stay, but uh, John Cooper deservedly gets paid. Yeah, for sure. Uh, they did not d disclose how much, but he's probably in the $5 million range, as it says here. Quinville uh, is the highest paid coach at $5.5 million this year. And he, Quinville should have won last year, by the way. I love Brenda Moore, but <coughs> Quinville should have won the Adams. But you win two cups, you win two cups. You can say all you want about how he had such a great team or all of those sort of things like that. But I think if you win two cups, you're going to get the $5 million a year. I think he's a good coach. However, we just saw in a game where I, I've seen this last year, far too often it seems like Tampa Bay's not ready to play. I don't know if that's Cooper or what. Now, Cooper used to never get spitting mad about anything. Last year he started to, like really spitting mad on the bench, losing his mind. And after what I saw yesterday, you know, me to make an excuse that they did the banner drop or whatever, uh, against Pittsburgh, that was pathetic. Not to mention I had uh, some skin in the game as well, but that's besides the point. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I had it as a pick, but um, that really ticked me off. Tampa Bay ticked me off all, at all at lots last year. So, But come the playoffs, they got her done. He, he deserves it. Okay, now we're going to look at award predictions and Olympic Cup medal favorites. I'll go over them really quick because they're pretty obvious. Uh, they have Connor McDavid at 64.1% to win the Hart Trophy. Can't see. I think he could get 160 points this year. Put down in the comment section, over or under 160, 150 points for Connor McDavid. I've heard a lot of 150s. I seriously think he can get 160 this year. 
Nathan McKinnon makes a lot of sense, but I just don't see. Braden Point, I never really looked at that. I think, what about Barkoff? What about, I mean, if you're going to get down to that area there, what about Hedman? I mean, there's a, for, for the third spot, there's a ton of players out there you, I think you can throw in for that spot. Who do you think, besides Point, who do you think out there? Uh, Art Ross, again, most points in the regular season, almost sure, surely. They, Edmonton has Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid playing again on the top line, too. It's going to be absolutely disgusting, I think. Um, Nathan McKinnon as well, and Austin Matthews. All of those are really good picks. Tell me who else you may pick there. Uh, Rocker Richard, Austin Matthews all day. That shot is insane. I love Pasternak. Don't get me wrong. McDavid will put up his goals, and Ovechkin's always going to be there. But Austin Matthews, as long as he stays healthy, has got the sickest shot I have ever. It's it's insane. Mitch Marner passing to Matthews too. Crazy. I think he gets it. I think he gets sixty this year. Vesna, you got to go with Bass. I I could see. I think Kemper's low, and uh, I think Kemper could be really with Colorado's defense in front of him. Look at it. I'm not a big Grubauer guy, and you saw what Grubauer did with him last done last year. Um, I think Kemper could his numbers could be just absolutely disgusting. Watch out for Ilya Sorokin of the New York Islanders as well. That kid is going to be absolutely dynamite. And the Islanders, you know how well they play defense me. And I'm going to throw a wild card out there in Peterson in L.A. I, I he's been spectacular as well with as L.A. has been trying to be uh, you know, grow into their defense there. He's been really well, and I think this could be the year they do grow into their defense. So. Calder, I think it's got to be Cole Caulfield right off the get-go, too. Trevor Zegers will, will be there. I just don't think he has enough of a team to do it. And, of course, Spencer Knight, if he takes out Bob Roski, uh, uh, which is very, very possible because Bob Roski, I think it, there's more chance that Spencer Knight wins it if Bob Roski has another weak year. I really think Spencer Knight will probably get it. Um, Norris Trophy, uh, it, there, it, there hasn't been much argument here. I've been doing these on my live streams, and uh, we've all been pretty agreeant that Kale McCarr is going to knock it out of the park this year. And I don't disagree with any of this. Usually I'm like, what? I would do this or whatever. But I really think these are, are – it's, it's, as far as awards are concerned, this is pretty – set in stone. There could be some surprises, but, and I even had Joel Quinville for the Adams myself. So a lot, and Gerard Gallant. I like these and McClellan. Like the only one I think that could, maybe I would put up here is Dean Evison. I just absolutely love him. Barry Trotz probably won't get it because now he's just made, everybody's so used to Barry Trotz doing well with that Islanders team. That Islanders team, if it wasn't coached for Barry Trotz on paper, probably is close to a bubble team. He's just amazing every year. People just got used to it. Finally, the Olympics, and they did a poll to see who would win in the Olympics this year. And Canada had 76.9%. I think that is a little high. Little high. I like United States higher than that. I think they've, the United States has about a 30, uh, 30% chance to win. I, I Sweden's 0% chance for the gold. And the Russian Olympic Committee, 5.1. Uh, yeah, third, I like the United States. I think the United States are going to have a super strong time, team this year. Uh, so that's our full 42. Anyways, that's all I have to give for you today. Thank you for coming in and listening to this fine programming. Check me out. Uh, check out the videos I've done too, by the way. I got some really cool videos like this. I just did uh, the uh, Hopo meter. 10,000 fans vote or uh, put in their uh, um, how optim optimistic they are for their team. And there's a gauge. This was on uh, The Athletic too. They gauged and gave a percentage to each team. Check that one out. It's pretty cool. Um, I Thanks for listening in, guys.
Hope you enjoyed this fine programming. I'll see you at my NHL Pearls of Wisdom on the Pearl of Wisdom Show Live. All part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all four major sports and all the teams in those four major sports, well, some of the teams, you'll love Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Okay, bye.